five minutes, one website, one full restoration and zero stress. That is what we are going to achieve today. Let's go. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be on our WordPress admin dashboard and we're gonna head across to plugins and to add new plugin just here. Now we're gonna keep this going nice and quickly for you. So I'm gonna head up to upload plugin just here and click on that. Now today we're gonna to be using Duplicator Pro. I already have Duplicator Pro downloaded just here. If you wanna check out Duplicator Pro, then you wanna hit the links down in the top pin comment or in the description where you'll be able to pick it up at the best possible price. And this is gonna allow you to use your backups and get your website restored just so much faster, so much faster. So let's go over to our duplicator profile here. It's a zip file, we don't unzip it and we just drag and drop it into this area here. There you go, file is added. So we're gonna install now. I'm gonna hang around for just a second while it will give us the option to activate this plugin. While it's doing that, I can show you my website, what that looks like. And I might be in a position that I want to go back to a previous version of this. Maybe I've done something like I have installed a plugin, I've missed a backup, I've done an update to my theme and it's messed everything up. This backup just allows me to go back to a previous point. Of course, also something could have just gone horribly wrong and you could have lost all of your data. And in which case you might want a disaster recovery point, something else worth looking at with Duplicator Pro, which I will talk about at the end of this video. But our plugin is now installed so we can go ahead and activate. That's gonna drop us through to our Duplicator backups page, which is this one here. You can see we have no backups at this point. If you're using Duplicator Pro regularly, it can actually do regularly scheduled backups for you. They're all gonna show here and you can just use them rather than having to go through this particular process. But this process is gonna work for what we want to do today. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna to go to import backups just here. From here, it's gonna send you through step-by-step step what you need to do. So here, drag and drop the backup file. So let's do that. These are my backup files. I've got the installer and the archive file just here. If you need to know how to make these, I also used Duplicator and I will link to a video at the end of this one that will show you exactly how to create the backups. Whereas obviously here, we are just restoring from the backup. So let's drag and drop that into there. And immediately you can see just down the bottom here, I have my archive file and the status here is telling me exactly how long that is going to take in order to generate this backup. Now for my website and my current speed of the internet, it's gonna take me about 20 minutes. I usually a little bit faster than that. It kind of catches up quite quickly. I can usually have it done in 10 to 15. But with that in mind, it's time to maybe, I don't know, watch some YouTube? Why not? I'll see you back in here in a minute. There we go, my backup is now there. So what I can do is I can just go ahead and click on continue. Now I do have the option here to set a disaster recovery point, something I strongly recommend doing, but not what we are covering today. So I'm gonna click here on launch installer instead. And if you want to know about disaster recovery, then you wanna stick around until the end of the video. You can see here as we go to launch the installer is asking for my password. That's because when I created my backup, I put a password onto that backup, something that I generally recommend that people do. There we go, it's asking if I want to connect to the site's existing database and essentially I just need to validate this, which is completely fine. That is exactly what I want to do. So I'm gonna click on apply and I'm gonna click on validate. Now anything that comes up in red tends to be a warning and the warning is essentially that I am going to overwrite the entire site with the backup, but that's completely fine. That's exactly what I want to do because I either want to go back to a previously saved point or I've got some kind of issue where I need my backup to fix that. So I'm gonna come down. The validation here for the scan is completely fine. This is showing that everything is gonna be compatible. There's no issues at all. So we can just minimize those for a second. And then I'm gonna come here 
tick this box and just go next. Again, just a warning just to let you know what is going to be overwritten. So there's all of these things that are going to be modified or removed or overwritten. Again, I'm completely fine with this. So I'm just going to go for OK. And you can see I'm extracting the archive files from that archive folder that we dragged across. So that takes about a minute to deploy. So we're all happy that that's done. It's showing you that the install result is all good. And now the last thing we need to do is we just need to make sure that this is ticked right here. And we're going to click on admin login. This is going to take us to our WordPress admin login page. Just need to log in there. It's going to remove any installer files, which it needs to do in order for this backup to be complete. And then we can go and have a look at the website, see what it looks like. So let's click here on admin login. And there we go. It's showing me that my site has successfully been restored. The cleanup has run. Everything is exactly as it was at the time that we made that original backup. And if we head across to my website, you can see everything is now available, working and is perfect again. And it really is quite that simple. If you need to know how I created the backup that allowed me to do that restoration here today, then you want to click on this video right here.